Good morning. good morning. It is good to be with all of you on this beautiful July day. We've had rain. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> I think everybody felt good about that wonderful rain and everything is fresh and it smells good. Um, the announcements are in your bulletin uh, for the month of July. We are Change for Change is going to the backpack program here in Geneva. Um, and Philip will be going to camp this week. All right, that sounds like fun. So uh, please continue to read over those, and, and uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure we can find out the answers. Um, the church office is closed from now until next Friday, so they're all gone. They left me again. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, would you like to please stand and greet one another? And uh, Love of Jesus. Good morning. Would you please remain standing and join with me in the call to worship? A word spoken, a voice heard. Jesus calls again and again to love and to serve. Jesus invites us to embrace the lonely. Let us join in singing number 369, Blessed Assurance.
And following the opening prayer, if you would st uh, remain standing for the affirmation of faith. Life-giving Lord, you have gathered us here today to praise you. You have made us your people for the purpose of sharing as a community in the joys and sorrows of everyday life and of working together to bring about your kingdom. Teach us how to show your love to all the world and how to share a cup of water in your name. Amen. Now if you would please join me in our affirmation of faith. We believe in God, whose love we know in the beauty of his world, in daily bread, in the kindness of human hearts, and most clearly in Jesus of Nazareth. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, whose touch of grace makes our eyes to see, our ears to hear, strengthens us to do all things in him, and delivers us from death to life. We believe in the Holy Spirit, in whose power there is peace, in whose presence there is joy, and in whose promise we dare to be more. Amen. You may be seated. So if I have any youngsters that would like to come and grab a bucket for change for change, please come on down. Well, good morning. Is it a good morning? Maybe. No, it's not. Why? You're tired? No, I'm right there with you. Our puppy did not like the fireworks last night, and he kind of gave us a fit last night. I'm tired too, but it's still a good day, Philip, right? It's still a good day. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. And that's kind of this, the story that, that Jesus is telling us today. I want to tell you what happened to me one time. When Jim was in the Air Force, I didn't really know a whole lot of people that were on his team. He was on a, a team that, that flew out of Omaha. And we went to this gathering at one of the officers' homes. And we walked in, and I didn't know any of the wives at all, none of them. And all of a sudden, Jim was gone. He kind of took off and went a different direction. And there I stood, and I didn't know anyone. I kind of felt like a fish out of water, you know? Well, apparently somebody saw me. It was one of the officers on the team. He was a Navy guy, and he was really, really nice. And he said, Kim, I think I know where Jim went. Come on. So he showed me where Jim went. And to me, you know what that was? A cup of cold water. Because I felt so alone, and I didn't know anyone, and he offered me friendship and he offered to show me where Jim had kind of taken off to see but he did that a lot to me you know but that's okay that's okay we made it through <laughs> that's okay he took me to a lot of places I didn't know anyone but there was always somebody who would offer that cup of cold water when you're hot and on a and thirsty on a really really hot day what's the best thing 
water. And do you like to get those nice cold cup drinks out of like the hose? The water is always colder out of the hose than it is in the house. Oh, unless you put ice in it, then it's colder. But, you know, it just makes you feel better, doesn't it? And so Jesus is saying, even when we offer a cup of cold water to someone, we are doing a kindness in his name for his people. So when we're doing something nice for someone, when you see someone who's sad and you maybe give them a smile or give them a hug or you see somebody that doesn't have anybody to play with or somebody that's new, have you ever been a person in a place that you didn't know anybody and someone made you feel welcome? What happened, Philip, when you didn't feel like you knew anybody? Did, what? Not really much. Well, that's good. I'm glad. Now you're going to camp. Do you think you're going to meet a lot of new friends? Yeah. You think that you might, there might be somebody there that's a little scared and a little homesick? Maybe not you, but there might be somebody there. And you can maybe make them your buddy and help them along. And that's offering a cup of cold water. Okay? So that we can do those kinds of things all the time to help everyone. Now, this morning, is there somebody out, anybody out here that you might not know very well? Are you look okay, what I want you to do. <clears throat> I want you to take this. And I want you to go up to somebody you don't know very well and say, I'm glad you're here, and give them a gift, okay? Here, Rosemary, I'll give you one too. And then come back to see me, okay? Somebody that you don't know very well. Can you tell them you're glad they're here? <laughs> That's good. Way to go, David. Way to go, Philip. Nice one. Thank you, Meredith. Okay, thank you. Rosemary. All right. Now, I'll tell you what. We're going to have a prayer. Thank you, because you know what? You made people feel like they're part of our family. And we're all a part of Jesus' family. And we offer some wonderful things. And I'll tell you what. After the prayer, I'm going to give you each a bag of those. Because I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so glad I know you. Okay? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for loving us so much, and thank you for showing us how to be kind to others and how just a little kindness makes a big difference in somebody's life. So I thank you for these youngsters. I thank you for the way they love you and the way they share you with so many in their lives, and they probably don't even know it. I just thank you for the kindness that they give. They give it in your name. Amen. Well, the scripture this morning is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. It's three verses, but they really have a lot in them. Jesus said, anyone who receives you receives me, and anyone who receives me receives the Father who sent me. If you receive a prophet as one who speaks for God, you will be given the same reward as a prophet. And if you receive righteous people because of their righteousness, you will be given a reward like theirs. And if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of my followers, you will surely be rewarded. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you please rise as you are able as we sing number 581, Lord whose love through humble service. <laughs>
may be seated. Would you please pray with me? Open the eyes of our hearts to your presence, Lord. Open our ears to your word as you guide us into your vision. For we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there's this ancient fable that's told about three merchants crossing the Arabian desert at night so that they could avoid the heat of the day. And during this starless night, they were passing over a dry creek bed when a voice from the darkness commanded them to stop. Well, they were then ordered to stoop down, pick up some pebbles from the creek bed, and put them in their pockets. Well, they didn't know where this voice came from, so they were obedient. They did what they were told. But then they were told to leave that place and not camp near it. And then the mysterious voice told them that in the morning, they would be both happy and sad. Well, they were a bit shaken, as I'm sure any of us would be, and confused, but they were obedient to the voice, and so they traveled on during the night. And then when dawn came, the merchants anxiously looked into their pockets, and rather than finding the pebbles that they thought they'd find, they had precious jewels in their hands. And they were, as the voice told them, happy and sad. They were happy that they had picked up the jewels, but sad because while they had the opportunity, they hadn't picked up any more. You know, studying God's word is like finding treasure. Someday we may wish we'd studied a little harder. Maybe we'll wish we had been more obedient. Maybe we'll wish that we'd shared Jesus' love with more joy, more boldness, more passion. Maybe we'll wish we had more, given more to servant evangelism. Now, aren't those two words we don't like to hear too often? Servant evangelism is a rather strange phrase, and it's defined like this. Showing God's kindness by doing an act of humble service with no strings attached. You know, in these verses from Matthew, Jesus is talking about doing some practical servant evangelism. He's describing the reality of living the Christian life when he talks of sharing a cup of cold water. You know, Christianity and our relationship with Christ is a personal thing, but I don't believe that it's always meant to be private. Our life with Jesus is a life that's designed to touch others in a real life workable ways. We don't have to do something extraordinary that hits the news. We just have to let God do extraordinary things with ordinary people. In other words, let God do what God wants with us. So how do we share Jesus in real, practical, workable ways? Well, we can do the small thing to show the main thing of God's love at work. I like that song, you know, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who saved my soul. I think that's kind of the way it works. So this challenge, what would you do challenge, is one of those moral ethical dilemmas that was used as part of a job application. Okay, here's the scenario. You're driving along in your car on a wild and stormy night. You pass a bus stop and you see three people waiting for the bus. There's an older woman who looks as if she's about to die, an old friend who once saved your life, and the perfect man or woman that you have been dreaming about all your life. So which one do you offer a ride to, knowing that there can only be one passenger in your car? It's a two-seater. So who do you choose? Anybody have any ideas who they choose? Who would you choose, Rosemary? That's exactly right. That's the answer. That's the answer. I mean, you could pick up the the older woman because she's going to die or your best friend to repay him back or, oh, you know, you want this guy or woman, you know. But out of the 200 candidates who answered this one, that was the answer that the one that was hired gave. 
Yeah, she's pretty good. She's good at riddles. So you see, Jesus begs us to never forget to look beyond our comfort zone, to look out and see a bigger picture than maybe we truly want to see. We, God wants us to see God's picture. And Jesus challenges his disciple all those years ago, and he continues to challenge us as his disciples in 2023 to do small things to show the main thing of God's love at work. So here in Matthew 10, it's giving a cup of cold water. Now, I'm sure we all know how good a cold, clear drink of water is. You know, out in the field on a hot day, there is nothing better than a cold drink from the irrigation well, I don't think, anyway. In John 13, the night before he dies, Jesus washed the disciples' feet, and then he challenged them to love others. Jesus then makes this observation. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Do the small thing to show the main thing of God's love at work. We truly never know how a small act of kindness will touch and transform a life. You know, in my Bible, I have this question written beside these verses of Matthew. I did this many, many years ago. What does my love for others reveal about my relationship with Christ? You know, what does our love for others reveal about our relationship with Jesus? And when you think about it, it can be quite humbling. You know, some years ago, John Bowes, a chairman of the parent company of Whammo, you know, the ones that make Frisbees, he sent thousands of Frisbees to an orphanage in Angola, Africa. And he thought the children would enjoy playing with them. And several months later, a representative of that company visited that orphanage. And one of the nuns thanked him for the wonderful plates that his company had sent them. She said the children were eating off the Frisbees, carrying water with them, and even catching fish with them. And when the gentleman explained how the Frisbees worked, the nun was so excited that the children would now be able to have some fun alongside all the work they do with them. We may never fully know how a life will be touched by a small act of kindness, but God does. You know, another way to show servant evangelism is to understand that simple acts done with great love will ultimately change the world. In the summer of 2013, a software engineer named Patrick gave Leo, a homeless man, a choice. He said, I'll give you a hand up or a hand out. So Leo had to choose between $100 right at that moment or two months of coding lessons. Well, Leo had been living on the streets since losing his job in 2011, and he decided he wanted the lessons. So Patrick provided Leo with a best basic laptop and three coding books and tutored him for an hour every morning. And after three and a half months, Leo had learned enough to create a smartphone app that was released in December of 2013 that helps commuters organize carpools. So you see, good actions can bring good fortune. Simple acts done with great love can and will change the world one life at a time. And Jesus puts it this way in verse 42, and, 42, and I, I believe this. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is known to be my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly be rewarded. For you see, that's the treasure in God's word. We're reminded again and again that simple acts done with great love will change the world, beginning with how God came into this world God didn't come with bells and whistles and a big parade. God entered this world as a baby. God touches people at their point of need, not just to heal them physically or to lift their spirits, but to change their lives. God entered this world to change our lives. He came and gave his life on a cross to pay for our sins and to change the world with his love. God knew we'd never get it right on our own. And so God sent his son. God sent Jesus to die for us. And God sent his Holy Spirit to lead us to faith and to change our hearts and people who touched our hearts with his love. You know, God so desires to use each and every one of us with simple acts done with great love to change God's world. 
Jesus was asked what it meant to love one's neighbor. And the guy doing the asking thought he was already doing this, and he was just hoping to look really good in front of his friends. But in answer to the question, you know, Jesus tells the story. He tells the story of the Good Samaritan. I'm sure you all remember that parable in Luke 10, the story of the man who was mugged and robbed and left for dead. You remember that the priest and the Levite crossed over to the other side and they just left the man to die? Remember, it's a despised Samaritan that stops and looks after the injured man. You remember how Jesus asked his questioner, who do you say was the neighbor? And when the man answered, the one who had mercy on him, Jesus said, go and do likewise. You see, that's the treasure of God's word. So, so to share in servant evangelism, we also need to realize that our service power isn't based on who I am or who we are, but on who Jesus is through you and me and through us. You know, we can get caught up feeling guilty that we don't do enough to show Christ's love or feeling horrible because how lacking our love may seem. The challenge comes from the fact that we try to love under our own power when in fact the power to share Jesus' love in practical ways comes from Christ. You know, Paul, the Apostle Paul, got this. He understood this even through all the trials and the prison time and the, all the struggles of his life. And that's why Paul tells us in Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Salvation and life with God is not by my power. It's not by your power, but what Christ has done for us and through us. The power of the life we live in love toward God flows out of God working in our hearts, and that love is towards others. You know, in 2002, Nike commercials challenged us to just do it. Sharing Jesus in practical ways with a cup of cold water, with a meal, with words of prayer, a listening ear, a smile, waiting in line, a ride to the doctor, so many other ways that Jesus says, just do it do it. But we need to always remember why we do it. We do it because Jesus did it. And we do it because Jesus died for us. Jesus gives us eternal life. Jesus empowers us with his presence. We do it because of our love and our gratitude to Jesus for all he has done. So Jesus challenges us to live out our purpose, our calling, not only in the extraordinary times, but in the ordinary times as well. And, you know, we're in the ordinary time of the church. And we give, do it even if we give a cup of cold water in his name. So how does that cup of cold water practically play out? Think of the many gifts of food and money given to so many through places, through the change for change that we do every Sunday. Think of the way this church has reached out with love and compassion to so many whose hearts are breaking. Think of the many phone calls made by each of you to check in on someone and hugs given, notes mailed. All of these are that cup of cold water that Jesus is talking about. But let's dream some new dreams. Where else is Jesus calling us to share that drink? Could we become mentors to children? Could we partner with a school? Could we organize community events? What is your dream for this community of faith. You know, there are so many opportunities just waiting for us to discover them, those new jewels to uncover. We're held in the amazing arms of a loving God who shows us that even in the changing times we live in, we're not in them alone. All of us are called to work together to do these simple acts of kindness to be hands and feet of Jesus, to show God's love as we have received that amazing love. And we cannot limit our amazing God. So are we ready to open ourselves to all the opportunities and the dreams that God has for us to show us how those small things done in great love can change God's world? We realize our service power is not based on who we are, but on who Jesus is through us. And understand that simple acts done in great love seem so small, 
and yet when we realize God is at work through them, we discover the <clears throat> great life of sharing Jesus in practical, workable ways. How it will make the difference, it will, even with one of those cups of cold water, when we give it in Christ's love, one life will be changed at a time. Amen. <clears throat> we come to our time of prayer. I know that um, Nancy Nichols is having some more issues, so we'll keep her in our prayers. And Sherry Head and Jim's brother Dave, if you could be praying for them as well. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord our God, we your people come to you this day fully aware that we need your presence and your help in our lives. Yet aware as well that we often fail to stop and turn to you for that help. We get caught up in the troubles and the turmoil of daily living. We become busy with the goals that we have set for ourselves and our friends. We strive to be loving. We seek joy and peace. We desire to be gentle and patient and kind, to show goodness and to have self-control. And yet these things all too often elude us. Help us, Lord, to root ourselves more deeply in you, to seek your will for our lives, to stop and listen for your voice when we're troubled, to fully rely on you when we strive to do what is right, to remember you and trust in you when we're assaulted, to med meditate on your goodness and your gracious will when we begin each day, so that like trees by a stream which send down their roots to the water, we may produce by your power the fruit of your spirit. Gracious God, we remember the joys and cares of all those that we have come in contact with this week. We thank you so much for the amazing rain that you have poured down upon us. We thank you for those life-giving drops. We pray for all those who are lonely and fearful or in pain, for those who crave that cup of cold water and a hand of compassion and friendship. And we pray, too, O oh Lord, for those who come fresh to our minds and hearts this day. We pray for Nancy and Sherry and Dave, Louisa's family, Jerry and Tina, Donna and Bob. Thank you, Lord, for being our God and making us your people. Thank you for growing in us and for helping us to grow. Thank you for the ministry you entrust to us. Thank you, Lord, for listening to your people praying and sending your spirit in this place. Thank you for the cup of cold water you have shared with us through others and for stirring our hearts to continue to pass that cup on to others so that they too may know of your greatness and amazing love. May your will be done in us and by us, both now and forevermore. Amen. Now, if you would turn your hymnals to number 15, we'll share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, 
to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. The elements before us have been blessed by Reverend Doug Greiger. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Jesus felt tender compassion for the suffering people he met. He realized that many workers would be needed for a great harvest of mercy and love. This day, you and I are called to do this work for the reign of God. This very day, you and I are called to be sweet labor of generosity, healing, and peace. So let us bring our gifts then so that the ministry of this church will be a growing, vibrant witness to God's love. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. Let us pray together. God of grace, it is our delight and our devotion to give these gifts to you. All we are and all we have are yours alone. Accept this joyful offering as a token of our abiding love. Use it to bring peace, justice, and comfort to all the world. Amen. Now let us join together and sing number 2172 in the little black hymnal, We Are Called.
Jesus is the way, our way to God. Jesus is our friend and our gateway to new life. Jesus comes to us through God's great spirit. So may that spirit go with us this day and fill us with opportunities for service and ministry so that we might share that cup of cold water in his name. Amen. Amen.